Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve some problems that you will find on page number 746. Please turn to it. Always make sure the book is in front of you. Page 746. On page 746 you will find two problems. Number 31 and 32. Number 31 is something that we did yesterday already. So we'll pick up from 32. Now if, you're at, the, if at the end of the video you find this helpful and you decide that you would like to work with me and you wish to get hold of me, you can do so by sending me an email at kishwariprep at icloud.com. Alright? Let's look at number 32. In number 32, it's a very simple problem. They simply want us to find the slope of a line and we are given three points on the line. This first point here is negative 6, negative 27 fifth. Here's another one they give us, 5, five halves and negative 2. Another one they give us, 9 and 3 fifths. Let me rewrite that thing that 9 did not come out very nice. 9 and 3 fifths. So, since there are 3 points here, let's give them names so it's easier to talk about them. Let's, let's call them A, B and C. A, B and C. Since there are 3 points here, we have 3 different choices as to how we can go about measuring the slope of this line. We can either, we can either, either go from A to B, we can use these 2 points, or we can go from A to C, or we can go from B to C. Any one of these 3 should do the job. Let's just go from A to B. Let's just go from A to B, shall we? So going from A to B, we're looking for slope, we need to change in X. Let's see how much is changing in X. We're going simply from A to B. So we start our journey at negative 6 and 5 halves is 2 and a half. 5 halves is 2 and a half. So think, imagine in your mind a number line. If we travel all the way from negative 6 to 2, that's a journey of 8, 8 and a half. Change in y, change in y, we are going from negative 27 fifth to negative 2. Negative 27 fifth to negative 2. Why don't we think, why don't we think of negative 2 as, as 10 fifth? This makes it easier. So they are all in the fifths. So now for the time being, forget the fifth here, forget the fifth part, that was the whole point. If we go from negative 17, negative 27 to negative 10, that's a journey of 17. 17 fifths. That's how many fifths we have to travel. There we go. Slope is, slope is simply change in y over the change in x. Change in y is 17 fifth. Change in x is 8 and a half, which is 16 plus 1, 17. 17 halves. Which is simply, we take the top part here, I don't have the room there, I'm going to continue here, which is 17 fifth, the top part, times the reciprocal of the bottom part, which is 2 17. 17 are going to cancel out and the slope is simply 2 fifth. Slope is simply 2 fifth. I wonder what slope is going to turn out to be had we made our journey from A to C. Should we find out? Let's find out, going from A to C. A to C. A to C, let's see how far we have to travel. Change in X we're looking at first. Change in X, all the way from negative 9 to 6. There's a journey of 15 units. Again, imagine in your mind, number line, on the number line from negative 6 to 0 is 6 units, and then 0 to 9 is another 9 units, 15 units. What about changing, we're going from A to C. What about change in, change, change in Y? Again, Forget the fifth for the time being, that's, that's the whole point here. Just look at negative 27 and 3. A journey from negative 27 to 3 is a journey of 30 units. A journey of 30 units, but 30 fifths. Because we have fifth here, A to C. We have a fifth here and we have a fifth there. Um, let me erase all of this irrelevant part so we can see it. 30 fifths. 30 fifth is just 6. Therefore the slope is simply the change in y over the change in x, change in y is 6, change
chain in x is 15, divide top and bottom by 3, and we end up with 2 over 5. What do you know? 2 fifths. Same as before. The slope is 2 fifths. Now what do you suppose we're going to get if, it's, if we were to make our journey from B to C? Let's find it out. B to C. B to C very quickly. Okay. Again, from 2, if we, had, if we were to travel from 2 to 9, 2 to 9 would have been a journey of 7. But we are starting our journey at 2 and a half, not 2. So it's 6 and a half. What about Y? Again, forget the fifth for the time being. Ignore the fifths. Just look at negative 10 and a positive 3. A journey from negative 10 to positive 3 is a 13. 13 fifths. 13 fifths. And that is our slope. Let's put the change in, change in x over here. 6 and a half. There you go. All you have to do is simplify it. So we end up with 13 fifths times six and a half which is twelve plus one thirteen thirteen over two which is big it's going to become two over thirteen there you go thirteen is going to drop out and we end up with two fifths no matter which way we look at it of course the slope is not going to change I was being silly of course the slope is going to be the same because they're falling they all fall on a straight line let's do the next one shall we That one was number 32. Let's see what 33 has to say. 33. 33 is a game where we are told that the score is obtained by subtracting the number of incorrect answers from twice the number of correct answers. I put all of this on the blackboard because it makes it easier, you understand? So, how do you figure out the score? Our score is going to be, we take twice the number of correct answer, twice the number of correct answer, so two times the correct answer, let's call correct answer right, we're going to instead of, instead of speaking in terms of correct and incorrect, we're going to speak in terms of right and wrong. So how many questions you get right, you take two times that amount and you subtract from it the number of wrong. There you go, that's your score. Okay, uh, where was I, going? I was going to say something, I forget now. Oh, what I was going to tell you is that instead of making it so complicated, Instead of making it so complicated, think in a very straightforward way. It's a game where if you're right, you get two points. If you're wrong, you lose a point. That's all it is. If I'm right, I get two points. If I'm wrong, a point is taken away. That's all. So that's the score. They further go on to tell us that this particular person, uh, let me give you a couple of examples. This particular person answered 40 questions. Number of questions answered was answered 40 questions. In other words, the total number of right answer and total number of wrong answer has to be 40. And we are told that the score that he had was 50. There you go. There are two equations, two unknowns. Very straightforward, very simple deal here. But before we get into this thing, let me give you a couple of simple examples. A couple of very simple examples. Let's say, for example, you got five right and five wrong. What would be my score if I had five right and five wrong? Well, for the five right, I get two points each. That's 10 points, and for the 5 wrong, they take away 5 points, so my score will be 5. What if I had 6 right and 3 wrong? Well, every time I'm right, I get 2 points, so that's 12. And every time I'm wrong, they take away 1 point. So my score is going to be 9. That's the idea. So we have two equations here. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to rewrite this equation a little bit better. So it lines up properly. We don't need this combo jumbo. Let me let me bring this out a little bit. There we go. That's all it is. We don't need that either. So that's our score. And this is total number of questions we answered. Number of right and number of wrong has to be 40. Because they tell us in the in the, in the problem that we answered 40 questions and our score was 50.
That's all. The set of the two equations, W is going to drop out. 3 R's has to equal 50 plus 40, which is 90. And therefore, number of answers that we got right, it must be 30. If the number of questions that we got right is 30, and since we answered 40 questions altogether, we must we answer 30 questions right, we must have answered 10 questions wrong. Let's see if it verifies. We have a score of 50. Let's see if it works out. For the 30 questions that we got right, we got 60 points because we get two points for each question. And the 10 that we got wrong, we lost 10 points. There you go. We got a score of 50. It checks out. It checks out. That was number 33. That was number 33. Let's look at 34. Number 34 simply says, what fraction of the circle is the shaded region here? Here's a, here's a circle, and we are told that this angle is 100 degrees, and this, this part is the shaded region. The question is, what fraction of the circle is shaded region? It's very simple. This is 100 degrees. We know the whole circle is 360. The whole circle is 360, of which a slice of 100 degrees is shaded. So it's 100 out of 360, that's what it is. Divide top and bottom by 10, 0 drops out. Divide top and bottom by 2, 10 becomes 5. And 3 has 1 twos. After we take away 2 from the 3, we have a remainder of 1. 1 goes and joins the 16, it becomes 16. 1 goes and joins the 6, it becomes 16. And 16 has 8 twos. In other words, in other words, 36 divided by 2 is 18. I'm making it too complicated. There you go. The answer is, what fraction of the circle is uh, shaded? The answer is 5 18. 5 18 of this circle is shown as the shaded region. Let's stop right here. There's only four more left. And if I were to continue, it's going to become a very long video. In the next video, we'll tackle these four, four problems that you see there on page number 748 and 749. All right? If you wish to get hold of me, just send me an email, as I said before, at kishwaniprep at icloud.com. Bye now.